and welcome along. In this video, I'm going to show you my strategy for starting as a farm manager in Farming Simulator 22. We're going to go through from the initial farm setup to show you which production chains would be a good start and how to get some vehicles and bits to set you up and get you nicely going here in the game. Uh, now, what we're going to start with is something I started with with my new farmer video. We're going to head into the settings down here and I want to change it so that we turn all of the helper stuff off. Uh, again, as I said in that one, much better to manage your money if all of this is off. We then come back out uh, to here and the first thing I want to do is try and pick some land and set our setup for what we're going to be doing. The land we pick at this stage is very much going to determine what we're going to be doing going forwards. So going into here, we want to come into here and we can see at the moment I've got on screen all of the fields that are ready harvest and all the fields that are getting close to being ready to harvest and looking at the various fields we've got around here i really like this yard as a starting area uh, we've got several canola fields around us as well and all of those if we look at them are ready to go so this this setup here is pretty good uh we've got some oats and we've got some uh wheat i think that is yeah, that's fairly close to us as well. So the three fields that I'm initially going to purchase are going to be a 41, 52, and 30, which are all canola fields. Uh, we're also going to purchase the farmyard here. Now, none of these are actually canola, but uh, two of them are ready to harvest, and we can make a quick little bit of extra money from them as a result. So with that done... We now have those set up there. And we're left with 826,000, which is a really reasonable amount of money. We have canola, though. So what I want to do is come over to here. And the production chains are easily the best way to maximize your money in the game. We've got the oil mill over here, which we're going to visit. And this takes our canola. So to maximize how much we're going to be making with our granola, we want to buy the oil mill. That is 80,000. So that is great for us. And that is a single chain production. So this will produce canola oil that we can then sell at sell points. The next thing we need to do is head over to the shop. Because initially we need to get harvesting these fields. So we'll head into here and what I always do before I go purchasing anything else in a in a game setup like this is we go and check what is available in the sales. And actually in this start we're pretty <laughs> we're pretty lucky. We've got a Fent 700 Vario here. It's got uh, 33 hours on it, but it is 48% off. And it's a 200, we can go up to 246 horsepower on this. Absolutely brilliant starting tractor for us on here. So if we head into here, one of the nice things about the sale is that uh, the price here is the base price for the 150 horsepower. I am going to knock that up a little bit. Uh, I want to take us up to about 200 horsepower. Really good mid-range tractor to get us started with does take it up to 212 i personally have a preference for uh, the michelin tires and uh we are going to put a front loader attacher on it because front loader is very going to be very important to us for doing our production chains work finally you can set your license plate to whatever you want i'm going to go 001 uh v f n which is how i go with mine uh we're going to go with the standard elm creek and we're going to go front and back and we'll do with that so there we go that is our tractor setup we're going to buy that and uh yeah a 209 horsepower tractor for that little money is absolutely brilliant. The other thing we want to do is we need to get a trailer because we want to do some carting. Now, while I would love to get the class carrot here, 
Uh, what we really need is a trailer that is very versatile and we can turn into a flatbed. And the only options really open to us for that are any of the Dolly trailers. So we've got the Welga DK115. So I think the next one that can do is this one. Yeah, this Brantner here, this does a flatbed configuration quite nicely. Uh, this is quite good. It's it's 39,000. And um, if we take the cover off and just do it like that. Uh, yeah, that's 39,650. It holds uh, about 18,000 litres. So uh, pretty good for a medium-sized combine. And yes, we'll hold quite a few pallets, which is going to be useful later on. Uh, we're going to leave it in the green, seeing as we've got a Fent tractor. And uh, I'm just going to go with, again, the Michelin tyres on that. I'm going to put the number plate for my tractor on. Again, doesn't really cost anything. But, uh, yeah, nice little cosmetic uh, addition to it. Back only. Oh. And then we click OK. And we've got the number plate on there. So uh, we will buy that. Uh, yes. OK. So then we've got a good setup for our tractor and our carter. Now, I said this in my video for New Farmer. I don't think you need to own a combine. Uh, you're going to be having it sit there in your shed at least for the first couple of years doing nothing for most of the time. And what that allows us is it means that we don't have to restrict ourselves to a really small combine like the top liner to begin with. We can take something bigger like our New Holland here, which has a 9,000 litre tank, or our John Deere, which has a 10,000 litre tank. I am going to go with this. Um, actually, fitting our fitting our trailer, uh, the 9,300, two tanks of this is going to be just over a full trailer. So that actually fits really well with our trailer. So we will get the wheel set up on here. Uh, license plate. I don't tend on leased equipment to put a license plate on. And then what we'll do is we will lease this combine. Yes. And there we go. And then we also want to lease ourselves a header to go with it, which is the New Holland header. We will lease that. That has no options. And finally, we want to get ourselves a header trailer. Uh, and we're going to go with the uh, with this one. Because uh, it's a nice dual-wheeled one. There we go. And doesn't have a dolly on it. Again, we don't really need any options. So we'll just lease that for a little bit of money. And that saves you a nice little bit of cash to start off with. So here we have a really good harvest setup. Uh, we've got a nice big trailer. We've got a good tractor. Uh, we've got a nice combine header and header trailer. So uh, let's get this lot set up and taken up to the field. Now, what advantage to you doing canola over doing, uh, say, wheat or barley or oats or something like that is to get the most out of those, uh, what you really have to do is go through the grain mill and then the bakery. Uh, you can make a lot more going through that. Uh, the You end up with about 2,500 per 1,000 litres of uh, wheat or barley um, oats I think it's it's roughly the same whereas uh, here with the canola what you're doing is you're taking the canola oil uh, you're taking the canola and you're converting it to oil and that produces about uh, 2,000 euros per thousand liters in fact if we look at our production chains here uh, we can see roughly what the setup is so for every 200 litres of uh, canola we deliver, we get 100 litres of canola oil. Uh, and that basically works out at uh, 3,059. So your, yeah, your, your best price at the moment at this time of year is 3,059. So you're doing about one and a half times the value of your canola as that is coming in at 
Actually, 1400. So you're not making a massive amount extra. You are making some extra money. But uh, yeah, at the moment, it isn't a huge amount extra. Which comes to the next thing where you need to look at the price fluctuations. At the moment, the best price for canola is mid December. For canola oil, you're looking at a similar setup. So yeah, it's all on the way up. Not a massive amount extra for doing it this way, but you do at least get to do this. Also, the other thing to look out for is any contracts that have canola or or uh, olives. In this case, there aren't any on this map. Or, or that have anything else that goes into your production chain. So sunflowers would be a good contract as well. Because what happens is you deliver, especially if they deliver into the oil mill, then you will make money from them because you make money from the contract. You also make the crop itself goes into your production chain and you're able to make the product from that as well. I actually find that Farm Manager is probably the easiest of the three starting modes. You have a setup where you're you're very much free and easy to select what you want by a pretty big watch of farmland for one and a half million. And as you can see, we've still got a big whack of money left. We are going to be spending that. We still do have many things to buy. But at this stage, you're, you're looking pretty good. You've got several fields. You're able to harvest a good amount of crop off them. And you are in a position where you can immediately expand your farm. Whereas with New Farmer, you're very much restricted by how much you already own in land and which equipment you have with it. Uh, the equipment not being worth a huge amount of money. Whereas in Start From Scratch, uh, which we will cover in a later video, uh, you are very much more restricted with what you're able to do at the beginning. I also plan to do other videos in this series along the lines of specific crops and specific setups. So, for example, we will have a look at olive farms and uh, we will do uh, dairy and sheep and create specific farms along those lines. If there's a specific farm setup you would like me to take a look at and give you a guide on how to get started with, please drop a comment down below and uh, we will have a look at making it possibly for a future video. And now that we have a full trailer of canola, we can run this up to our oil mill and start refining some canola oil. Now this will take a little while to refine. Hopefully, by the time this has gone through and been refined, we will actually have a better price for the canola because right now, it is, uh, it is not a great price. There we go. That should be our point. Let's just have a look at here. Yeah. Because it is, it is 200 litres of canola to make 100 litres of oil. The price for the oil is not that great at the moment. Uh, there we go. Canola oil. Uh, it is. That's coming down. That's going up. Now, that is equivalent based on that conversion of 1.1 dollars um, 1, uh, per thousand liters of canola that we put in here. At the moment, we're getting 1,455 if we deliver it to, con con uh, to Goldcrest Valley. Now, Goldcrest Valley does have a cost assigned to it because that is via the train. Uh, but hopefully this will give us a little bit of extra money when it eventually hits its peak. So we finished our first field and we're moving on to the second. And it's at this point that you can either keep going like this or as we're going to move a little bit faster in this video 
Uh, get yourself a second tractor and start working that first field to get it ready for the next year's crop. So we're going to head into the shop here and we're going to have a look at some tractors that are a similar sort of size to what we already have. As before, it's always wise checking the used area first. Uh, there's nothing really in here. Um, so uh, yeah, nothing really that's of interest. Possibly this John Deere front loader and I'll show you why in a moment. Because in here under the medium tractors, the best bet for getting a good powered tractor is to have a look at the classics. So something like the Massey Ferguson, uh, it's uh, 3670, which is 170 horsepower. The John Deere 70H10, which is 175 horsepower. Or, or the John Deere 4755 at 190 horsepower. Or the Valtra Valmet 8750 at 190. Now, my choice around here, and based on what we're going for on this farm at the moment, would very much be between these two, the John Deere and the Valmet, uh, and the Valtra Valmet. So uh, if we have a look at the John Deere, as this is an American map, uh, we can't actually add a front loader onto it. Not a problem, as the main tractor we have at the moment has a front loader. So I think this is probably the better choice for us. Again, I'm going to stick the Michelin uh, tires on it and I'm going to give this a 002 VFN on it. Uh, and then we'll do a back only plate and that will do us very nicely. So, 108,000, so it's actually costing us more than our second hand fence. Um, but this should be a great little all rounder for us to continue on our farm around the 200 horsepower mark is pretty good so let's buy that yes okay and if we go back and look at our map at this point and we scroll through to the status of our fields we can see that pretty much all the fields that we've purchased uh minus 45 and 46 are all in need of plowing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get ourselves something to do some plowing with. And there are a few options for this in Farming Simulator 22. Uh, we have got the choice of um, a more standard plow. We can go up to uh, 160 horsepower on the Agromass uh, with that. We've got the subsoilers. Uh, where we can go probably fairly high with this. We've got 130 horsepower for the four meter coon there. Um, then we have the jump as we did before uh, in FS19 to the 435 horsepower. Or finally, we have this new group and this spaders. Now the spaders require about 200 horsepower for the Farmex uh, 450 trailed or for the KRG, uh, it's 190 horsepower. Now these have uh, varying widths. I would actually, it's, it's quite interesting the jump in horsepowers here. We've got this at uh, 35,000, uh, which requires 190 horsepower for 2.5 meters. I'm going to push our John Deere a little bit. Uh, this requires 200 horsepower. We've only got 190. So uh, what I think we'll do is we'll switch the John Deere onto the carting job. And we're going to put our Fent on this Farmax. So let's purchase that as well. Uh, that will cost us 58,000. In fact, no, I'm not going to purchase this. I'm going to lease this because... We're not going to have to do any plowing on our farm for a while. So here's our brand new John Deere and our farm axe. We'll take this to the field, uh, get these swapped round. And that should work quite well. Now this, of course, is a geared tractor. So lots of gears to go up through. Lots of gears on this, actually. Right, into reverse. And we'll get this hooked up and back up to the field. There we go. Let's go switch our tractors around. So we've now switched the tractors over and we've got the spader working its way through this field. Uh, it is a fairly slow going piece of kit. 
Uh, however, it's going at uh, four or five miles an hour. It is double the width of a plow, which only goes seven. So it still gets the job done quicker. One thing this spader does do is it pulls up rocks by the bucket load. I mean, look at the amount of rocks that we have on this field. However, that is not a bad thing. We will be able to run over this field after this is completed with a rock picker and make even more money from it. We're coming to the end of the final canola field now. And this means that uh, we are able to completely fill or able to place all three of these fields into our factory. And this is actually one of the other positives of having the production chain. We don't immediately have to sell it. We do not have to have any storage for the canola because we can just put it straight into our factory and get it processing. At which point we can just hold on to it there until we get the best price for it. Means that we have something that is raising us more money, uh, allowing us to store our crops and means that we don't have to purchase a an expensive silo or anything for our farm either and leaves us with the three fields that we have around the farmyard here and there are a couple of options here uh, i think harvesting these because these are oats and i think we've got cotton yeah and then we've got wheat in the far field with the harvester about at the moment, I think that harvesting these would be a very good idea. Uh, you have got some straw that you can get off the oats and the wheat. So if you are looking to go from animals or for animals from this point, uh, it may be worth keeping the straw and getting that bailed up. Personally, with the size of these fields, I don't think it's worth actually getting the straw for selling they're both fairly small fields you're not gonna make much back on the actual straw after you have paid to hire or buy a baler so uh, in those cases i don't think uh, it's very useful so we are actually going to shred these fields they're not very big and uh, and therefore uh, they're not going to bring in an awful lot, but uh, we've got the harvester here. We might as well get the money for them. The cotton field, however, we are never going to make enough money off such a small cotton field to really make it worthwhile hiring the harvester. So as a result, I think my recommendation there would be just to plow it under and get it ready for the next year. We're just coming up to finish the last of the two small fields. Our tractor, unfortunately, is a long way away. It is currently unloading. But as soon as it's done, we'll get it unloaded or we'll get this wheat unloaded and then we can get this sold off as well. And here our tractor comes pulling up into place hopefully i've parked my combine in the right place yep pretty perfect to be honest uh absolutely fantastic so we could unload this now uh and then we will go and sell this wheat and we'll be in a position where we're able to then go and pick some rocks now that we've finished using the combine we can return this uh we don't need to have it any longer you can go and do some contracts with it uh, if you want because in fs22 there is no hourly rate for your combine uh, but uh we're not actually going to be doing any more contracts or anything here today so we're going to return this but yes if you still have some fields or some contracts or even uh if we have a look in here is anybody looking for some uh harvesting of canola unfortunately not but if we could put the canola into our own production facility we would uh, make more money from that because 
the amount that we put in there from the contract would also go through the production. To return this, we just go to here and the leasing screen and then go uh, select return. Yes. And then do that for all three of the items until all we're left with is the spader. Now that we have harvested all the fields and we have freed up this tractor, uh, what we can do is head down to the shop and we want to lease ourselves a stone picker. Now the width of these uh, is two meters, 2.4 meters and 5.5 meters. All of them run at nine miles per hour. I think that the uh, ELHO is a good one to use on here where you're not too worried about uh, money at the moment. Uh, we are going to lease it because it's only a temporary thing. Uh, it is going to be leased for several days. And I want to cover the reasoning for that uh, in a moment. Let's just uh, knock this into reverse. Attach ourselves to our destoner. And then we can head out. So this tractor, uh, this 47, uh, 40, uh, sorry, 4755 should be more than enough power to pull this uh, and to do this destoning. I think it's only about a hundred pound, a uh, hundred dollars this takes to do it. And is a, is a pretty necessary thing after you've got something like the spader going through your fields. But the fact that you should make a bit of money and uh, a fortunate thing about doing several fields with the spader is that we will be able to get a, uh, a decent amount from this. Uh, but also it reduces the harm these stones cause to your field. And plowing and uh, spading and subsoiling all pull large rocks up to the surface of your field and need to be cleared out in order for you to not do a whole load of damage you can roll a small rocks back down but look at the size of the rocks this spade has been pulling up uh, it just makes sense for us to get the destoner on here and uh, and use it to make a little bit more money what this does mean is that you probably want to be getting a second tractor and you want to be getting your plowing or your spading or, or however you're preparing your next fields started as quickly as you can after you harvest them. It takes a lot longer to do those things than it does to harvest them and you need to do this in order to get your fields ready for whichever crop you're going to put in next. If that's a winter crop, you need a quick turnaround and therefore I'd recommend two tractors. If you're looking at doing a springtime crop, uh, say something like uh, the um, soybeans or sunflowers, uh, then you needn't rush so fast to get it done. But uh, it's still good to have your fields prepared really as quickly as you can. Now, while those two are, tractors are working that field, there is one other thing I would recommend buying at this point because it does make your life easier. And while you've got the money, it's worth doing. So that is under the construction and it is the farmhouse. Uh, it's 150,000, which is quite expensive in the base game. Hopefully some mods will come out soon where we will be able to sort that. Uh, we can uh, rotate this with the right mouse button and we can just put this on here. This is where it's placed on New Farmer as well. So it's uh, quite a good place to, uh, to put it and just like that. And the buttoning failed. There we go. Oh, we'll try like there then. And go yeah there we go uh, and so that just gives you somewhere where you can uh sleep through the night and move on to the next morning 
The last thing we need to do today is get a piece of equipment for this ready for when our olive oil production is producing some pallets. And that is to pop in here and grab ourselves a front loader. Uh, we are going to go on this, probably uh, the 5M. Not needing anything particularly big. We can go with the main colour being the Fent green and highlight of the Fent red. We'll buy that, yes. Because we're going to be using this a fair amount for everything from uh, loading pallets for seeds and big bags and everything like that as well. Uh, we also want to go and get a front loader tool for it. Um, and in this case, we're going to need the Albert pallet forks. So we'll buy those as well. And that then gets us nicely set up with our tractor ready for our olive oil. Sorry, not our olive oil, our canola oil to be produced. Uh, there are currently no pallets of it there. It should happen uh, within sort of the next game day. But that is a great way to get yourself set up for a nice good farm here on uh, farming simulator 22 uh, you're now able to get your pallets all filled up uh, you can purchase or hire equipment as and when you need it uh, my recommendation for purchasing versus hiring uh, is purely that if you're going to be using something repeatedly like a cedar uh, probably worth purchasing it if it's going to be a one-off every a year or so or it's going to be a long time between you use it for example either a combine or something like a spader it's worth renting it for the time that you're going to be using it i'm going to leave this video here at the, it's the end of the first day and so all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed this video please give it a like drop us a comment and give it a share and for all the latest videos from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel, ring that bell, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.